Hello everybody, my name is Francesca Zampollo. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you physically today, uh, but I'm in New Zealand because yesterday was my first day at Auckland University of Technology as Senior Lecturer in Design Thinking. Today I want to talk to you about design methods applied specifically to the food design process. So let's introduce the subject a little bit. My research is dictated by two interests and one influence. My first interest is food design. By now, we all know what food design is, but just know that for me, food design is the process where design is applied to any food or eating related subject. My second interest are design methods. Design methods for the first two phases of the design process. So, combining my two interests, food design and design methods, I wonder whether it is possible to start talking about something called food design thinking. I don't know, we'll see for the future. And my influence is the design approach called design-driven innovation, which in few words says that we should design for meanings. We should design meaningful stuff. So, very shortly, every product presents an either incremental or radical change in technology and an either incremental or radical change in meaning. If you use a user-centered approach to design, you end up with an incremental change in meaning and an incremental change in technology. If you ask people what they want, you'll end up with something that is ready on the market or with a slight improvement. But if you use a design-driven innovation approach, you can have products that present a radical change in meaning. And when you have both a radical change in technology and a radical change in meaning, then you have what is called a design epiphany, the best of the best. But what am I talking about? A couple of examples. These were video games before. They were played with our thumbs sitting on the sofa. These are video games after Nintendo Wii. Nintendo Wii presented a radical change in technology thanks to the sensory motion controller and a radical change in meaning because people started playing video games with their entire body and playing video games became a social activity. Another example. This is an armchair. This is something completely different. This redefines the meaning of sitting down. But Francesca, yes? I have a question. Go ahead. Okay, I understand you want to aim at meaningful food products and that you want to design a design method that allows you to reach that goal. But how? How do we design meaningful food products? Well, thank you Francesca. Great question. Well, the way for you to design a design method that allows you to generate something that in the end is capable of proposing radical change in meaning is by making sure that that method access people experiences and in particular access people's memories of the past and dreams for the future. When you do that you are sure you are reaching people's meanings. So making a long story short making a five years long story very short, I designed TED. TED is a design method for the preparation phase of the eating design process. TED means themes for eating design. TED is a method that aims at generating radical change in meaning. But how does you do that? With a tool and a technique that allows you to reach people's memories of the past and dreams for the future. The tool is called Visual Explorer, a group of 300 pictures representing everything from nature, people, paintings and so on. And the technique is a particularly structured focus group where the discussion is based on the star system, which allows meanings to emerge from the middle of the group. Here is how the focus group works. Participants are given one question, relevant of course to the research topic, and are asked to write down the answer to the question. Then participants browse the images scattered on a big table, keeping the question on the back of their mind, and choose one image that simply talks to them.
Then they sit down and they write how that image answers the question given. After this, the discussion begins. Before continuing to explain how the technique works, I want to give you just one example that demonstrate how powerful these images are. In one instance, participants were given the following question. How would you describe an imaginary space for it to be your ideal eating space? At the beginning, one participant answered. My ideal eating space is a place where I can sit comfortably. I don't like feeling very hot or too cold. The ideal temperature is around 20 degrees. Finally, my ideal eating space is somewhere without too much noise from people chatting loudly, loud music or appliances from the kitchen. The answer here is quite pragmatic and raises predictable subjects like the comfort of the chair, the temperature of the room, of the room and noises. But after browsing the pictures and choosing this picture in particular, the same participant gave this answer. In the image I see penguins walking to the sea. It is like the last penguins are following the one in front of them. It is something very common for young people, fo following the mass. They go to a place because it's crowded, even if it's not their ideal place. I find this annoying and I don't usually do it. It's easy to see here how this image generates a completely different answer to the question, reaching deeper into this person's memories of the past and dreams for the future. After doing this exercise individually, participants discuss their own pictures in group. And here is how the discussion works. People sit in circles, usually groups of five to six participants. Then the first person starts discussing her picture and what she sees in it in relationship to the question asks. Then every other person tells what they see in that picture and how they would use it to answer the question. Then the second person talks about her picture and the process continues. This technique was based on a particular approach to dialogue called mediated dialogue where people, instead of trying to convince each other, put their contribution in the middle of the group. It is in the middle of the group that meanings are formed. But how do I make that a design method specific for the eating design process? By choosing the appropriate structure to give to the focus group discussion. This one! The five aspects meal model. Among all the categorization of the aspects that influence the eating experience, this is the one that summarizes the five aspects that design can include in the design process. These five aspect, aspects become the subject of discussion during TED. The five aspects were in fact transformed into five questions. The questions that are a key component in the Visual Explorer technique and the star system. Discussions are then transcribed and transcriptions are analyzed using the method of data analysis called thematic analysis. In this qualitative method, data are approached in an inductive way, letting themes emerge from the text. Okay, let's sum up for a moment. TED is a design method for the preparation phase of the eating design process. What TED does is generating a series of themes on the ideal eating situation. These themes can be used in any idea finding phase of any eating design or food design process. I call these themes thoughts for food, and here they are. They are, of course, divided in different groups that are correlated to the five-aspect meal model. Some are general, for example, some are related to the companion, the people we eat with, some are about food itself, and then the environment and the others eating around us. And every theme card that I've created has its explanation behind. So far, I've used these theme cards, Thoughts for Food, in two different uh, workshops. One aiming at generating uh, design ideas on the ideal eating situation and one aiming at generating design ideas on a dish that tells stories. The design ideas here were also further developed in, with 3D mockups and the results were extraordinary.
and thoughts for food demonstrate is that there is a scope for design methods designed specifically for the food design process and that they do work and they are useful and they do help generating more interesting design ideas that can potentially become products that present radical change in meanings. So that's it for me. I food design. Do you? demonstrate is that there is a scope you need to look over there you need to look over there over there oh what I can't hear you